tragedies are commonplace. All types of diseases, people are slipping away. Economies down, people don't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. Oh. Folks without homes are in the streets And the drug habits some say they just can't be Mothers and robbers, no place seems to be safe You'll be my protection every step of the way I want to say thank you Lord for all you've done for Could have been me Thank you After Thank you When no fool Thank you And no blood Thank you All along Thank you Without a single friend Thank you Just another number Thank you With a tragic end But you don't see Well, come on and let's magnify the name of the Lord right now. How many of you got to thank you in your spirit? When you think about all the things that the Lord has done for you, somebody ought to jump up on their feet and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence and your protection. Lord, we thank you. 
I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I made this determination in my heart that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble will hear thereof and be glad. So why don't you grab your neighbor by the hand, jump up on your feet, and magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together, because he alone is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praises. Today is a great day to give God praise for all the things that he has done for you. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, this precious privilege granted to us to enter into worship together. We ask right now, Lord, that you would allow your spirit to have its way, that you would make your name great in our midst today, Father. We thank you even right now in advance for the preach word that's coming our way. Ask, Lord, that it enrich our heart and bless our souls. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to take this time to thank you for joining us in worship today. On behalf of Pastor Walter Carter III and the Union Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church family, we are so glad that you tuned in. And it is our desire that something is said or done that will greatly enrich your life something that will bring you to a closer, more meaningful walk with the Lord Jesus himself and also with your fellow man. So once again, thank you for joining us. And now here's our Impact News. Here is your weekly Impact News. Wednesday mornings, join our prayer call to hear a devotional message and the weekly updates from Pastor Carter from the series Coping with the Crisis. The call starts at 6 a.m. This week, Bible study classes will not be in session. We are currently on break. Pastor Carter is asking that you access Right Now Media during your normal Bible study small group time for personal devotion. Sunday morning, our Christian Education Department presents the new fall series, Love One Another. Get involved. Class starts at 9.15 on Zoom. We need your current information. A link will be sent via GroupMe this afternoon to ensure we have your correct information on file. You only need to submit the form once, and one is needed for each church member in your household. Thank you. UTAB is online. Visit our website at www.uniontabernacle.org. Follow us on Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless.
your glory just pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy holy Good morning. Won't you bow and pray with me? Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the place where the sun rises to the place where it goes down, Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. There is nobody like you. God, we love you and thank you for this another opportunity to look together into your word. We pray, O oh God, that as we open the scriptures, that you would open our understanding. Help us to not only understand what your word says, but what it means, and most importantly, how it applies to our, to our lives. I pray, God, that you will settle our heart and our mind, block every plan and scheme the enemy may have for this service. Be pleased to be glorified through the preaching of your word. Strengthen some saint save some sinner but most of all god our prayer is that you our savior will be satisfied we do it in the strong and certain name of jesus christ amen good morning i'm so grateful and thankful to be back here preaching this morning i'm grateful that we have two brothers who much beloved who gave us couple of weeks wherein we could um, be off for a little bit. This pandemic has taken its toll on pastors all across uh, the country and certainly it did not elude me. But I'm grateful and thankful again to be able to stand and proclaim the truth of our God in this place. I know we're on Facebook Live, but won't you just type in the comments section, I'm ready for the word. Just type, I'm ready ready for the word we're going to continue our sermonic um, series from the song of ascents and psalm number 126 psalm 126 and it reads when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth 
was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams of the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Once again, for, your, for emphasis, let me read verse 5 again. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. And I want to label the message for the next few minutes that we have shared together today. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Let me just first say that, as I've already stated, this pandemic has, in no uncertain terms, taken the wind out of my sail. Truth is, I don't like preaching in an empty church. I would much rather see your smiling faces and hear your shouts of amen, preach, doc. Rather than reading them in the comments, not only that, the engagement of membership in our ministry as we seek to impact the church and the community with cross-centered ministry is just difficult in this environment. Not to mention that there are many opportunities that elude us because we are practicing social distance, but nevertheless, I still look up to God in hope. I thought it would be good for me to preach through this series of songs that the Hebrews would sing as they made their way three times a year to the annual feast in the city of Jerusalem. We are now continuing in that series entitled, Let's Go to Church. These psalms trace the upward ascent of our heart to God's heart, but it's not a smooth sailing trip all the way. We have seen in these psalms how they operate as a microcosm of the journey of the Christian life. You see, this psalm highlights the trouble that the people of God can sometimes find themselves in. In the songs of ascent, you will find songs of trouble. You will, you will find songs of trust, and you will find songs of triumph. Sometimes all three in one song. In other words, it's not all good all the way, all the time. I know we've been taught to look up and smile, but the truth is that the Christian life has some bumps and some cracks and some trouble spots in it. Everything is not always going to work out the way we want it to. It's not always sun shining. It's not always howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. There are some days that are filled with sorrow, filled with tears, filled with trouble, filled with doubt, filled with sickness, filled with brokenness. There are times in the Christian journey that we all have to face the sad reality that we can be defeated. Well, Psalm number 126 is a song that looks back at the captivity of the past as the Hebrews return to Jerusalem following their exile in Babylon. They had suffered so much, and now suddenly after the exile has been ended, 
uh, we see that the Lord suddenly turned the situation around. God had delivered them this psalm that we need during times of crisis is a much needed reminder of how God brings us from crying to worshiping, from weeping to worshiping, from, from being depressed to being delivered. We all go through hard times, don't we? And sometimes when you are in the thick of your sorrowful situation, it feels as if it'll never end. When you wake up in the morning to those tears of depression, of being in a bed that you formerly shared with a loved one, that you are crying day and night, and you go to bed with tears, you wake up with tears, tears. It's difficult to see your way through the situation, but I'm glad that the psalmist thought enough to write down this psalm. You begin to lose hope, don't you? You begin to wonder, is this all that God has for me? Where is God in my situation? Will I ever be happy again? Will I ever see the great days of old? Will we ever come back to church? Am I the only one that ever wondered and wanted to ask God, not quietly in the recesses of my heart, but I wanted to yell it out loud and say, hey God, what's up? When you're going through a time of deep sorrow, this psalm, Psalm 126, is strong medicine for your misery. It carries a powerful message of hope and help in times of need. It tells you of times of trouble and sorrow that they don't last always. It tells you that God will turn your sorrow into joy, your tears into laughter, your weeping into worship. God can turn your situation around. It even tells you what you should do while you wait. If you're not going through a challenging situation right now, let me tell you what my Arkansas grandma would say, just keep on living, baby. Trouble will find its way to your door. I trust that his psalm will speak here to your heart in this service, this morning, even over the World Wide Web through Facebook Live. I believe that the psalmist can speak to us in our time of trouble and doubt and depression to help us to make it through the day. Just in case you want to scroll past, let me pause here and tell you what I stood to tell you. Here it is. God's past performance provides us with future hope in our current situation. Oh yeah, that's a good word for many of us that need to hear it again, so I'll play it back so you can write it down. God's past performance provides us with future hope for our current situation. The psalm basically breaks down in just two stanzas, two main ideas. I will do the best that I can to explain it to you so that we can worship and hold on until God shows up together. The first stanza encourages you to remember God's past performance. The second stanza will encourage you to trust God to faithfully deliver you in the future. Verses 1 through 3, first, God's past performance. Remember what God has already done. Look at verses 1 through 3. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like the men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. This first stanza encourages you to look at how God has performed for you in the past. Don't think about it. Don't just reflect on it, but 
don't just remember it, but you need to sit back and, and marvel at the goodness, the grace, the glory of God in the past. What has God done in the past that you need to think about? God was good to them, and he was so good to them. I like it. He says it was like a dream. It was like Biggie Small. It was all a dream. It, it, it was so good that they, they could not believe that it was happening. When God delivers you, it can feel like you're in a dream. That's what we see in verse number one. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men who dream. You see, in 538 B.C., the Jews had been exiled in Babylon for 70 years, as Jeremiah had prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 29. Seventy years is a long time. Seventy years is longer than the seven months that we've been in the pandemic. Seventy years the people had settled down. They had built houses, planted gardens, gotten married, and had children. They had become so used to it that they forgot that God said that he was going to come back for them after 70 years. And 70 years, I'm told, back because of Ezra chapter 1, that 70 years to the day God told King Cyrus to set the, the people of God free. I don't know what, you, what you're waiting on God to do, but if God said that he was going to set you free, you ought to go ahead and shout in advance because he doesn't make any promises that he doesn't intend to keep. The, the Jews had experienced 70 long years of captivity, and then in a moment, God turns it around. Just like that, they were in shock. They thought they were dreaming. They couldn't believe it. It was too good to be true. It was almost as if they said, pinch me, I must be dreaming. It's impossible. It's, we've waited for so long, and after so long waiting on God to do what God said, when God does it, sometimes it's just unbelievable. Oh, I thought I would have had a witness there, but I glad, I'm glad that I brought one to church with me. His name is Peter. Peter was locked in prison in Acts chapter 12, and the angel of the Lord shows up and smoked Peter and woke him up and all of a sudden Peter went from being shackled and chained to four guarded soldiers day and night to being free to go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over again. Now Peter stops in the middle of the situation because it was it was too good to be true. He could not believe that the Lord had sent an angel to set him free. He thought what he was seeing was a vision. Has God ever blown your mind with what he has been able to do? Has God ever shown up in your life to the point where you told your friend, your neighbor's Pinch me. I must be dreaming. Let me pause here and testify. Maybe it hasn't happened for you, but it has happened for me. I can remember back nine years. Well, this church had lost two pastors, and I was at the time candidating for another church. That church told me thanks but no thanks. I thought the world was coming to an end. I was ready to give up on God and ministry. But then Union Tabernacle called and said, we want you to be our pastor. It was like a dream. I couldn't believe that God had once again shown himself to be faithful to even little old me. Listen, I like what they say. It was like a dream that made me laugh. That, that sometimes God is so good to us that it makes you laugh. Now remember, if you pay attention to the tense of the verbs in verses 1 through 3, this is the psalmist thinking back to what God has done previously. Back, back to this psalm here, our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with shouts of joy. Be, before you can understand their laughter, you got to first understand their tears. They, they had been in captivity. They, in Psalm 137, the, their captors, while in this 70-year captivity, required of them a song. And listen to their reply as the, as the captors required these people of God to sing songs of Zion that brought joy to their heart while in captivity. 
He said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Have you ever wondered that? I know what you're thinking when pastor says praise the Lord. When pastor says type amen, type hallelujah, type I agree. You're thinking like they might have been thinking. Ah, how can we sing at a time like this? I'm at home in my kitchen, in my living room on a Sunday morning. I should be in church. It feels like a strange land, but I want to tell you, you better learn how to praise God through your strange land situation. You better learn how to praise God no matter where you are because no matter where you are, God is still good. He's good, I'm telling you, and I want to let you all know right now where you are. He's so good to you, it'll make you laugh. God, God sometimes will blow your mind at his benefits and blessings in your life to the point where you can't keep the laughter in. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Maybe I should call Sarah to the witness stand after she had waited for 90 years to have her husband a son and finally God gives her a son. And, and, and the Bible says that Sarah, <laughs> she laughed. Can you believe that? Have God ever done something so miraculous in your life that it made you laugh, it gave you joy, it made you smile? You looked at your friends and they said, what's going on? And you couldn't hardly explain how good it was because the joy down on the inside made you laugh it gave you joy but 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 then verses two and three show us God's glory and our joy and when God does a work like this in your life it ought to bring glory to him and joy to you that's what we see in verses 2 and 3, actually. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. It is said among the nations, what God did for Israel was so amazing that even the surrounding nations had to sit up and take notice of what God had done to give God glory. They had to testify their God is a great God, that sometimes God blesses his people so that those who are around you will be able to witness and hear the testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness and the glory of Almighty God. And then notice that after the nations give glory to God, so also do the people of God. The Lord has done great things for them, and the Lord has done great things, here it is, for us. And we are filled with joy. God's salvation is meant to be seen by nations when we read Isaiah 52 and 10, the Lord will lay bare the holy arm in the sight of the nations and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of God. Here, let me park here parenthetically and ask you a question. What has God done in your life that was designed to draw your unbelieving neighbors to himself? Maybe God hasn't drawn them to himself because you're too busy keeping it a secret. But you ought to be like the people of God and testify of the miracle-working, provisional power of Almighty God. These verses... Remind me of our responsibility to be a witness. To tell people around us about how good God has been to us. We should be the most joyful of all people because God has done great things for us. Listen, I don't know how you feel today. But what is it in your past that God has done that you need to remember as you face the uncertainties of your future? You need to understand this. I want you to tweet it if you can, that God has a very impressive past performance portfolio. He has done great things in the past. God has been good. And because he's been good, you ought to have faith 
that he is able to secure you and deliver you in the future. Notice in verse 3, in verse of Psalm 136, is the only verse in this psalm that is in the present tense. <laughs> See, you ought to have a present tense effect from the past performance. That, that right now God should give you the confidence to face the uncertainties of the future and to keep on moving. Verses 1 and 2 are past tense. Verses 4 through 6 are future tense. But here in verse 3, it expresses the joy in the present based on the past. Oh yeah, you ought to look back over your life and think things over because you ought to truly be able to say that I have been blessed. I got a testimony. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. God has been good. He, he's been good in the past. And many times, listen, what we do wrong in church is we remember what we ought to forget. And we forget what we ought to remember. Listen, you ought to keep a faith file on God. That every time God blows your mind, you ought to write it down so when you get to those moments where the devil tries to convince you that God can't deliver you, you need to look back at the last time you was broke. Look back at the last time you was sick. You need to look back at the last time you was depressed and the same God, oh I'm feeling good about preaching right now, the same God that did it before, I'm telling you He's available to do it again. When God does a work of deliverance in your life, it brings him glory, but it ought to bring you joy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. God gave it to me, and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah, yes. But that's, that's just half the song. First half of the song tells of God's past performance. But this second half of the psalm, the second strophe in this song points to God's ability in the future. That you can trust God's faithfulness in the future. That's the first thing we learn from our song. God has done great things in the past. And then secondly, we need to understand that because of what God has done in the past, you now, in the present, ought to have confidence in his ability to deliver you in the future. God is going to do it again. He's done it before, and he can do it again. Look at verses 4 through 6, if you don't mind. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying the seed to sow, will return to the songs of joy, carrying the sheaves with him. The captives were back in Jerusalem now, but there was still much work that needed to be done. They needed to rebuild the temple and rebuild the walls. They faced discouragement from within and opposition from without. God had worked a great deliverance for them in the past, and now they needed to trust in his ability to do it again. What has God done in your past that was specifically designed to give you confidence as you face the uncertainties of the future? Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 23 says because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed for his compassions never fail they are here it is I love it I love this verse one of my favorite verses in the Bible they are new every morning great is your faithfulness when you face troubles every day here's what you got to know that your situations will change but God does not that the same God that brought you through before, the same God that promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you is the same God that you are trusting in and depending on. God is faithful and he can deliver you in the future. So where does this, this text display trust, Pastor? I, I'm struggling to see it. I know you are. Let me show it to you. It's 
pray for God's full restoration and blessing. That's what this second stroke highlights, the idea that you can go to God in prayer. The second part of the psalm teaches you to do three things when you find yourself in times of trouble. First thing you got to do when you're in trouble is pray. <laughs> it, say, it seems so simple. I'm almost embarrassed to preach it. I, I've almost told you every week that in order to get to the place of God, the people of God need to pray. God has so navigated the circumstances that we have him that we can turn to when no one else is available. He says, restore our fortunes, future tense, O Lord, like the streams of the Negev. That word restore here is the same word that is translated brought back in verse 1. And this is the second mention of that same idea. And this is the first of the two images that the psalmist uses to speak of how God works in our lives. The first way is when God works suddenly and unexpectedly. That, that's what the first image is, the streams of the Negev. It means that the Negev was the southern part of Judah. This was normally dry and arid land. In fact, the Negev actually means dry and parched. But in the winter, the spring rains would suddenly come, send water rushing through the desert, Grass and flowers will spring forth suddenly almost overnight. <laughs> Let me just tell you, if you happen to be in a dry and parched season, just keep praying and ask God to show up like he did here in the text. The text says that God suddenly showed up and, and, and brought refreshment to an otherwise dry and parched situation. I know that it seems dim. I know that it seems hard, but I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that God can turn your situation around. He can do it all of a sudden. Listen, I'm a witness that you can go from ready to kill yourself to ready to shout from the mountaintops of how good your God is because God can turn your situation around. Why don't you go on the type? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. You ever feel like life is a desert? Spiritually, I mean, dry and parched. Has your relationship ever felt dry as a desert, devoid of love and affection and connectedness? Ha have your finances, don't, don't tell nobody, have your finances ever felt dry and parched and in need of some moisture. I want to tell you God can show up like the streams of the Negev in the spring in the springtime and bring life to an otherwise dead and dry situation. But then you need to know that God will turn your sorrow into joy. Pray for God's full restoration. And then know that God, here it is, is still able. We, we have this beautiful promise from God in verse number five, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Know that God will turn your sorrow into joy. God, listen church, can turn your situation all the way around. He can fix it in a heartbeat. Trouble won't last always. It might be here for a little time, but it will not last always. The first image points to the work that is God's. Sudden and undeserved blessing springing forth like the streams of the Negev. It's the difference between what God has to do and what we must do. You see, sometimes God can move in your life and change your situation without your help. <laughs> he, he can fix it and you don't have to do nothing. But then there are other times when God is working through your efforts in order to bring your deliverance. 
is the difference between God's miracles and God's providence. They are both examples of God working, but in a different way. We see this all the time, don't we? Listen, I know that we think that we can cry, pray, roll around on the floor, have pastor slather your head with oil and speak in tongues and God will turn your situation around. But I want to tell you, if you want a job, you got to go and fill out an application. If you want a better marriage, then you got to be a better spouse. If you want better children, try being a better parent. If you want a better community, be active and vote. If you want a better country, then you got to stand for justice. But there are some things that God will do without you but then there are other things that God is going to do through you I knew I ain't gonna get too many amens right there but I like the way it has been suggested that you ought to work as if it all depends on you but then pray as if it all depends on God. That sometimes God can do what you cannot do without your help. But then sometimes God will do what you cannot do. But he requires your participation. When we read this song, I think of Jesus Christ at Nazareth. When, where he took this, the words of, 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 of Isaiah and bestowed them in a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Are you going through a time of sorrow right now? Are you going through a time of tears? Do you find yourself in the secret of your bathroom crying to yourself, woe is me? God says that he is going to come and he's going to wipe the tears from your eyes. Weeping, Psalm 30 tells us, may endure for a night. Lord, have mercy. But joy is going to come in, in the morning. Listen, I know that sometimes trouble will come. Job said, man that is born of a woman is but of a few days and they are full of trouble. Jesus said that, that, that in this life you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. Listen, I want you to know that there is nothing that you are facing right now that God cannot fix. Lord, have mercy. I said there's nothing that you are facing right now that God cannot fix. That, that, that God is faithful to deliver. But will you pray? Will you trust? Will you sing? He says pray, but then he says no that God will turn your sorrow into joy. So pray for God's full restoration and then know that God is able to deliver. We now turn to the second image that we have in the section of the psalm. The first image was the streams of the Negev. The second image is that of sowing tears. The first image points to the work of God, the second, our responsibility in the process. We see this in life all the time. We have all had a need that God required us to work with him to bring about in our lives. God can turn your weeping into worship if you just play your part. But, 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 then, but then finally, commit yourself to the Lord and continue to do what is good. Do you know what typically happens in our lives when we become frustrated by life and situations? We typically back away from God. We, we back away from a commitment to him. We, 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 we return to old habits and old relationships in order to self-medicate rather than to rush into Almighty God and trust him to deliver. Listen to verse 6 as I close. He who goes out weeping, carrying the seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying the sheaves with him. This verse expands on verse 5 and focuses on the sower going forth 
to work and eventually returning with the harvest in his hand. Can you see this, this, this singer walking and crying and sowing and returning full of harvest that God will bring back you bring you back to a place where you can rejoice at his ability to see you through it. First Peter chapter 4 verse 19 teaches that those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 is better. It gives us the word of encouragement that you and I need in days like this. Let us not become weary in well-doing, for in the, at the proper time you will reap as long as you don't give up. Now, now, now I know this is, this, is, this is hard. This is easier said than done. That, that, that when life happens and tears are falling, it's hard to remain productive when we are uncertain if God knows or God cares. I like the way Smokey Robinson and the miracles helps us this morning. Don't act like you don't listen to V103. They got a song that, that basically says, people say I'm the life of the party because I tell a joke or two. Although I might be laughing loudly and hearty, deep down inside, I'm blue. So take a good look at my face. You see, my smile looks out of place. If, you're, if you look closer, it's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. I want to tell you that, that the, while Smokey Robinson and the Miracles were talking about a bad relationship, here I want to use their words to encourage you that even if you got to cry, you need to understand that God can trace the tracks of your tears. Oh, you don't believe me, do you? I got biblical backup for that. Did you know that God keeps a record of your tears? Psalm 56 verse 8 says, record my lament, list my tears on a scroll. Are they not in your record? God keeps track of your tears. One day he will personally come according to Revelations chapter 21 verse 4. And the Bible says he will wipe. Hallelujah, yes. Every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death, no more mourning and no more crying, no more pain for the older things have passed away. I know this pandemic has been hard for us. I know that you are weak and ready to give up, but keep on sowing, keep on crying, and keep on planting. I know it gets hard sometimes, but keep on sowing in times of sorrow when it's hard. So in te when tears are difficult, but keep on sowing. But nothing is wasted in the divine economy of God. God has a plan for your tears. God is going to use your tears in order to water your harvest so that you can return with the testimony that if it had not been, Hey, glory, for the Lord who was on our side, I, I would not have made it. What, what do you do when you're walking through a time of sorrow and crying and weeping and tears? What do you do? You better learn, baby, to remember God's past performance. The same God that did it before, he's more than able to do it again. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always weeping man endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning somebody out there needs to know today that God will wipe away every tear from your eyes he will replace your weeping with worshiping if you just learn how to remember what he's done in the past but not only should you remember what he's done in the past, you ought to trust the same God who delivered before is able to do it again. Pray for God's full restoration and blessing. Know that God will turn your sorrows into joy. 
But then be committed to the Lord and do good, even in the face of the most difficult situation. I got to go. My time is up. But lest I leave you short of the cross, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of what this psalm requires. I believe that Hebrews chapter 12 records for us that Jesus is the one whom we ought to fix our eyes upon. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which easily ensnares us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Here it is, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Can I tell you that Jesus wept as he made his way towards Calvary's cross, but the tears that he sowed in pain, he reaped one early, early one Sunday morning when he got up with all power and all authority in the palm of his hand. And this psalm reveals that God God is true. God is faithful. God will provide. I know you don't understand what God is up to, but I want you to know God is up to something. And he is able to turn your situation around. I close with the words of one of my favorite psalmists, Kurt Franklin. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand no matter what may come my way. My life is in your hand. Trouble don't last always. Hold on. Hold on, church. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. He will not leave you. He will hold you and keep you. All you got to do is trust him. Trust him and know that our God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter what you're facing today, please know God is faithful to deliver. He's faithful to his word, to his promise. He's faithful to keep everything that he said he would do. You could take that to the bank. And God can turn your situation all the way around. Listen, I want to tell you this. If you're listening to me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you need, to, you need to pause for a moment and make an open confession that Jesus is the Savior of your life. You have to admit that you are a sinner. Confess that he is the Savior and then ask him to come into your heart. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised his son from the dead, the greatest act that has ever been known to mankind is that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He did not stop short of his assignment to be obedient even to the point of death. You need to accept him as Savior and Lord so that the promise of this passage that when we all make our way to Revelations 21 chapter through 22, you will be present to see God <laughs> wipe away the tears from my eyes. Listen, they don't make tissue in heaven because there's no crying over there. Your eyes won't leak when we get to heaven. Every day will be Sunday. Every month <laughs> Hallelujah, will be the month of May. Every year will be the year of Jubilee. Then, and not now, it'll be howdy howdy. 
and never goodbye. Won't you accept Jesus today and receive the precious promise of his provision of eternal life? Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for the promise of your word that even when life becomes difficult and we seem to want to doubt your ability, that your faithfulness still proves stronger than our situation. I pray for my brother or sister who listens even now in need of a Savior, that you would burden their heart to make a confession for salvation right now. I pray for that saint who is depressed or their head is bowed down and they don't know what they're going to do. I pray, God, that you would continue to push them, that you would continue to encourage them, that they would turn to your scriptures, remember your past performance, and trust your faithfulness to deliver in the future. We know you can, and we believe that you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to thank you for joining our Facebook Live worship service today. I, I pray that the word was sufficient to encourage you during these times. <clears throat> Typically, at the end of these services, we play music, and we have an out video. I want to just simply say to you, you can make it. Hold on. You can make it. Trouble don't last. Always. See you next week.
If the Lord has spoken to you and you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the grave, you can be saved. And we certainly offer Christ to you this day. For the greatest thing that God has ever done for any of us is he sent his only son to die for our sins. Now all you have to do is accept him as your Savior and Lord and you can be saved and be entitled to eternal life as we are. Or perhaps you are saved and just looking for a church home to connect with. We here at Union Tabernacle are endeavoring to impact the church inside and out and the community with cross-centered ministry. If you'd like to join with us as we attempt to impact the world through Jesus Christ, all you have to do is go to our church's website and fill out a membership form. And we would love to contact you and bring you in in order to get you acclimated and go through orientation for membership into this wonderful fellowship of believers. Either way, we pray that you would join with us again on next Sunday as we look to continue this wonderful sermon series. Additionally, I want to remind those of you who are members of this church already of our obligations and commitments to give consistently, sacrificially, and regularly. I pray um, that you will pay your tithe. You can do so through the Givelify application. You can go to our website and click on the Give tab also and give through um, PayPal. Or you can mail your gifts here to the church directly at 6623 South Stewart, Chicago, Illinois, 60621. We would love to hear from you. If you'd like to email us, instant message us, and let us know how you've enjoyed these services or what we might perhaps could do for you or your family during these times, we'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, we'll be praying for you, and we love you, and we'll see you next week. God bless.